Okay, I'm going to do three exam questions from of, of moments taken from different eras. This is from January 2001, so it's from way back. Uh, get it in front of you and have a read. Pause. You might need to pause this video quite a bit because I'm going to go quite quickly to get this fit this in in time. Anyway, the first question I'm going to start adding forces. We've got a uniform rod. Uniform means that the centre of mass is in the middle. So the centre of mass is there, 70 newtons. That's at position 1.5. I'll add that later. We've got a normal reaction here and the reaction at Q here. Uh, in fact we're told that the reaction at P is 20 newtons, so I'll add that in, 20 newtons there. Uh, a couple of things I'm going to add to the diagram now. I'm going to measure everything from here, 0, so this distance is 0.5. I'm imagining that this is basically uh, distances marked on a long ruler. The total distance here will be 3 metres, you see. This one will be 1.5, and this one we're going to, we're asked to find later in the question, we'll call that x. So let's get the calculations done. First thing is, we're going to always in these questions do two things. We're going to say that upwards forces balance with the downwards forces, so straightforward uh, uh, forces there, Newton's law. And secondly, that turning forces clockwise balance with turning forces anti-clockwise, otherwise it would spin. So upwards equals down. The upwards forces are 20 add R, and that balances with the downwards force of 70. So R equals 50. For two marks, make sure you write the units 50 newtons. Second part of the question, the distance from A to Q, so that's what we've called X, measured from A, it doesn't really matter where you measure from, just be very careful. Measured from A, now one thing that I'll advise here is to make sure you know which, which forces are turning clockwise and which forces are turning anti-clockwise, stick a pencil down along the line to act as the rod, fix it at the position you're measuring from, so hold it at A. Now imagine there's a piece of string pulling in that direction, that would pull in that direction. And so with this one in that direction, and this one would pull in the opposite direction. So always check this out if you're not, not too sure about this. Anyway, clockwise equals anti-clockwise. A clockwise force is 70 newtons times 3 over 2 metres, 1.5 metres there, distance. And that must equal 20 newtons times 0 0.5. Add 50 newtons times uh, x. And it's x we're trying to find here, so we get 105, subtract the 10, and divide by 50, we should get x equals 95 divided by 50, which is 1.9 metres. And that sounds about right, so have a check that that works yourself, and we'll go on to the next question. This one's from January 2008, uh, so get it in front of you and have a read whilst I get, get my thoughts together. Right, I'm going to put forces on, we've got a mass mass 12 kilograms length 5 meters equilibrium horizontal position first thing to notice is when we get down to when we get to it later it's going to tell us that we're going to model this as a uniform rod so here is where the weight acts at the center of mass and its mass is 12 which means its weight is 12 times g 12 times 9.8 uh, there's a reaction at a which sorry a tension at a it's two strings holding it up so there's a tension at a there which we're later asked to find and a tension at c which we're later asked to find. Those are the only forces. Uh, put a few measurements on. I'm going to measure from here at zero. This is therefore two and a half. This is four, because the whole thing is five and it's one from there. So the tension in the rope at C and the tension in the rope at A. Right, there's only ever two things we do in these. One is upwards forces equals downwards forces, and the other is anti-clockwise forces equals clockwise forces. First thing I'm going to do in this case is because we've got two unknowns here, is to try and get an equation with only one unknown. If I do upwards equals downwards, I'll end up with both unknowns involved. But if I measure turning forces from here first, turning forces measured from here, again, lay your pencil there, you'll see that TA has nothing to do with the turning force here because the distance is zero. This one pulls in that direction, and this one pulls in that direction, if you fix it at zero. Uh, so we get um, clockwise forces will be 12g times distance 2.5, and, and that equals the tension in C that we're trying to find times the distance 4. And so we get tension in C equals, divide that by 4, we get 315 over 2g. 
So there's the answer to part one, uh, and that's in, new in newtons. Then the tension in the rope at A uh, is found by upwards forces equals downwards forces. Upwards forces equals downwards forces. And so you can see here that TA must equal 9 over 2G. Now, Yarnell's rule for these things, I've, I've noticed quite a lot of students who get stuck on, well, how do you know the tensions are different? One piece of string, one tension. Two pieces of string, two tensions. Use that rule. Next thing is a, a small load of mass 16 kilograms is attached to the beam at a point which is y meters from A. The load is modelled as a particle given that the beam rain, remains in equilibrium. Okay, I'll need to need to get rid of some of this some of this stuff. I'll get rid of this stuff and be back uh, any second now. Right, I'm back now. I didn't realise I'd have to um, add, add extra things to the diagram. So I've added I've added the the load y, which is 16 kilograms, so 16 g is the force at a point y, which we don't know where we don't know where it is. Uh, so I'll just label it y there. I don't know exactly where it is, so it doesn't. But, it, but as long as I do the calculations right, it shouldn't matter. We're now going to find a, an ex, an expression for the tension in the rope at c again. So again, take turning forces from zero. We end up with this one's that way. This one's that way, and this one is that way. If you stick, if you fix it at zero, so we get four T C must equal twelve G times two and a half. Add sixteen G times Y, and so T C must equal our our old mate. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Fifteen over two. Plus four y g. That says fifteen over two plus four y g. That's in terms of y then. Uh, the rope at C will break if the tension exceeds ninety eight newtons. Uh, you can't see this on the screen, but if you've got the question in front of you, that will be all right. So, that if the tension, if T C is greater than ninety eight, the rope at C would break. We're told that A can't break. Find the range of possible values where the load can be attached without the rope at C breaking. Okay, so this is the tension in C, and that has to be less than or equal to 98, which is 10G. So the equation we've now got is 15 over 2 plus 4Y, I'll cancel the G's on both sides, is less than or equal to 10. Uh, whipping that over this side, we get 4Y is less than or equal to 5 over 2, and so y is less than or equal to 5 eighths. Uh, in other words, the range of values is that y can be anywhere from 0 to 5 eighths, and 5 eighths is 0.625, so 62.5 centimetres. I think that's the units we're, we're using to measure. It's questions from January 2002, and I've answered the first bit where I've drawn the diagram. I'm going to answer the last question, last part of the question now. It says, explain how you've used the fact that the girder is uniform. The answer is, um, I, the centre of mass will be at the centre of the girder, in which case. So there's the complete diagram. We're going to find the tension at C and the weight of the girder. So the tension at C, this is uh, here, It's what the, this is three times that tension. I'm going to measure everything from the centre, because that's too much of an unknown, measure from the centre clockwise equals anti-clockwise. This force is round that way, this force is the opposite direction, this one will be that way, fixed at the centre, and this one will be that way. So this two, this one and this one are in the same direction, and this one and this one are in the same direction. So if I very quickly now write that, we get 4t, that's because the distance is 4 times t, add 5 times 250 and that must balance with the other direction which is 2 times 3t add 5 times 150 now I've skipped the skip to the calculations there, you can see that T is 250. Now the next thing is the weight of the girder, upwards forces equals downwards forces. And 
there we are, 600 newtons.